Scott, thanks so much for being here. Super excited to have you. Oh, our sincere pleasure. It's been uh, it's been a great day. Um, you know, I want to get right in. You know, into the questions. I know that this is going to be a, a quick, you know, um, firecracker. But uh, you know, when you started Augment, you know, one of the key things that you know that I heard you talk about this before was like reducing you know code bloat that happens often. Uh, talk to me a little bit about like you know what's going to happen to code base sizes across the globe. You know, when you, when this gets deployed. It's more of the problem that AIs have introduced. So, um, you know, AIs let you spin up new code really easily. Yeah. And uh, the AI, the current AIs are pretty naive about what's already in the code base. So I could have added something in the code base last week, and you want to add something similar. The AI will be like, oh yes, right away. Let's let's keep growing the code base. And so you get this bloat factor um, pretty quickly. You know, the ideal AI is one that wants to reuse software that's already in there. And maybe right. you need to adapt the software a bit in order to get more reuse out of it. We'll try to do that. Uh, but Nirvana is an AI that wants to delete code. Oh. And uh, it was a really magic moment for me when uh, Augment proposed its first deletion uh, of software. And it is something oh, that it, it comes up. And uh, that's going to help us really improve quality, whereas I think the early AIs have, have actually been causing a, a, a regression in software quality. Wow. So, uh, you know, this is fascinating that you touched upon quality because, you know, um, you know, in addition to code bloat, code bloat is one thing, right? It's like, yes, there's, there's a bunch of boilerplate code that's showing up a whole bunch of places where they shouldn't. But quality is suddenly an, an entirely different topic because if software is eating the world and the quality is not quite where it needs to be and like is, 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 a, is the agentic AI and, and the AI that you're using, is it going to make it better, worse? Uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about how that works. Well, it needs to make it better. Um, just in the U.S. Uh, market alone, I think two and a half trillion dollars was lost due to software failures. Mm. So, you know, we have a problem with software. Software comes up short of what our desires are for it and functionality, but it's it's unreliable and it's fragile. Right? You change incremental things, uh, and and the software breaks. Um, AI is going to allow us to build much more robust software. Um, so we're we're doing that now. You know, because we're helping both expert engineers as well as novice engineers avoid mistakes. Uh, so the AI can prompt them along the way, this doesn't look right, or this looks like it's out of uh, your security policy. You might be introducing a security bug here that you want to be able to, to close off. Wow, it's not just quality, it's also quality plus security. Yeah, so we're, we're mining, we're trying to mine all of the knowledge that's in your software and it's mm -hmm. the supporting infrastructure. So we can bring those insights to bear. In fact, we'll even look at things like currency. So if um, you're moving away from a database yeah. or, in, or moving away from a programming language toward another, we'll try to amplify that signal and accelerate the migration. And if one of your engineers isn't with the program and is trying to push back, we'll try to redirect them uh, in, in the way that you want the software to evolve. And so hopefully we can get to a much higher quality bar even in just the next few years. That's amazing. You know, this is this is fascinating to me because here's here's what happens in a large organization. Typically, when you're thinking about building something, you almost always imagine engineers think that they're doing that for the first time, right? They never yes. realize that that thing probably has been built already, and and so you start to see, you know, um, the same patterns start to repeat over and over again. But you're, you're you know, what I'm hearing from you is what we have here is an opportunity to sort of leverage AI to understand that, hey, this has been built. I, if somebody's nudging me along, not just on a, from a quality and the security perspective, but even from like, you know, it can fundamentally, it sounds like it could have a change in terms of like the, the impact, the, the, the pace with which we can innovate. Is that, have you seen that happen everywhere? It says, hey, you've already built this thing before. You know, I, I do think it's happening. Um, I, software is a little bit like a spreadsheet, right? When you write a spreadsheet and then someone tries to come in and understand what you did, yeah. uh, they often throw it away and start over from scratch. Programmers tend to want to do the same thing. They look at somebody else's code and they're like, I don't understand, this isn't yes, quite right. This, right. Isn't, this isn't what I want. Yeah. Uh, so they write new code mm -hmm. um, because they're, they don't want to go through the pain of understanding what's already there. I've had this problem with my own code, right? Well, I didn't want to understand my own code, so I rewrite my own code. <laughs> Done that myself be, be, more because, than once. <laughs> because I don't want to face that. AI really helps in that regard. Um, you know, even if the documentation is out of date, um, the AI can summarize the software and, and then go fix the documentation so you understand what's actually going on. Oh, that's uh, And it makes everything feel a lot less fragile. You understand the ramifications of a change yeah. um, because the AI is coaching you all through the process. Now, I have a curious question, though. If, 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 if one of the things that's always, you know, uh, been interesting is, 
using AI as a co-pilot versus what you're describing is that it's actually now morphing into almost a, a full-blown software engineer, you know, in, in some ways, right? Um, if that is the case, where does the software engineer live? Yeah, so we are big believers in augmenting uh, human intelligence with machine intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, the role of the software engineer, I do not think is going away anytime, anytime soon. Ah. Um, you know, th these AIs are, are helping us make incremental changes, like a step change in the software. I wanna move in this direction. I wanna implement this pull request or migrate this function or change this user interface. But there's a longer term trajectory of the software that lives over months and years. And, yep. and today that is entirely the purview of human insight in terms mm. of what that life cycle ought to be and what the goals are for that software. We don't even have data to train the models on like kind of how software evolves over a lifetime and you know what it, the aspirational targets are for it. So that's fascinating. What we want to do is push down a bunch of those mundane grinding hard pieces of, of work, mm -hmm. uh, to let the AI make them easier, and that frees up human intelligence to think more creatively and be able to move more quickly uh, to deliver the software of all our dreams. Now, that's, that's wonderful. I mean, I'm, I'm already bought in. Like, you know, here's, my, here's my question to you. If there's a, if there's a new grad that's graduating from, from college uh, with a computer science degree, typically what we do is we, we have the new grads, you know, as they start work, you know, grind through some of these things before they become senior software engineers. Now, what changes for them? Like, what do, what, what are you, what do you tell a fresh computer science grad coming out saying, hey, I'm looking for a coding job? Uh, I'm very bullish on AI leading a renaissance in software engineering. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we're gonna invest more. When we get predictable return on software, you know, there's so much software debt in the world and so much missing software and software that disappoints. Um, if we can clean all that up, I think we're gonna unleash a tremendous amount of economic value. And I think human um, intelligence is essential to this process. Um, we don't know how to move the software. The AIs don't have their own mission, purpose, mm -hmm. goals for the software without human intelligence. Uh, so I think the great news about um, coming out of university today is you can ramp as a software engineer in a fraction of the time that it used to take, uh, wherever you happen to go, um, you're able to, to be more effective more quickly and you'll know what you're doing as opposed to trying things and being worried whether they're gonna succeed or not. But most of all, you'll be able to unlock a tremendous amount of value for the businesses you work for with all this dramatically better software. Oh, that's, that's, that's wonderful. I have one, one last question, more for, on your background than anything else. Um, how did you pick coding as the problem to go after um, when it comes to AI? Because I know you've done, you've done storage, you've, done, you know, you, you, you've been in different roles, different markets. What got you, you know, hooked to like, hey, I need to really go solve this part of the problem? You know, it, it's very interesting, um, this was not by design, but I, I did a PhD in machine learning a very long time ago. Uh, and I was fascinated then with teaching computers how to learn, and I did it in the domain of programming, although it was symbolic systems, not neural networks. Oh, so you understand networks. Works, I know. No, uh, Carnegie Mellon was, oh, Carnegie uh, Mellon. was, was, my, was my school. Uh, but uh, ironically, one of my AI professors was Jeff Hinton, who went on to win the, the Nobel Prize. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and you know, he, was a, he had a lot of naysayers uh, at Carnegie Mellon uh, even then, and had the fortitude to stick to that research agenda. So then, you know, bring it back to me, you know, I've spent 25 years trying to build complex systems software and, and face the pain of that every day, like working with people much smarter than me um, and, you know, feeling the pain and challenges of how to evolve, you know, these tens of millions of line code base in any kind of efficient process. So fast forward as LLMs emerge, I see the two, these two threads of my career coming together. Like, hey, there's a chance to oh, wow. fix That's software, right? Software can eat the world uh, if we make it reliable and easy to use and deliver on all the feature functionality that we're seeking. I think that promise is gonna become reality over the next decade. That's amazing. Uh, Scott, thank you so much for taking the time and hanging out with us. Uh, it was wonderful talking to you. So glad to be here. Wonderful day. Thanks. Cheers.